Natural selection is based on the idea that strong individuals that are well adapted to their habitats will survive. For example, in a herd of deer threatened by predators, the ones that can run faster will survive. After a while, the herd will consist mostly of strong, swift individuals as the weaker and slower ones fall prey. However, this mechanism does not cause deer to evolve. It does not transform them into another species, for instance, horses. Natural selection only eliminates weak, disabled, and sick individuals and ensures the permanence and health of a particular species. It has no evolutionary power. Darwin was also aware of this problem. This is why he confessed in The Origin of Species that natural selection can do nothing until favorable variations chance to occur. About the emergence of favorable traits, Darwin was deeply influenced by one of his contemporaries, the French biologist Lamarck. Lamarck thought that living things pass their acquired traits to future generations. In Lamarck's view, giraffes evolved from deer-like creatures. Their necks extended from generation to generation as they tried to reach higher branches for food. Lamarck also believed that if the arms of the members of a family were cut off for generations, the babies would start to be born armless after a while. Darwin, who was quite influenced by these examples, came up with an even bolder claim. In The Origin of Species, he argued that some bears, while trying to hunt in water, evolved into whales. But both Lamarck and Darwin were wrong. Their ideas were contrary to some fundamental laws of biology. In their day, genetics, microbiology, or biochemistry did not exist at all as branches of science. The laws of inheritance were not known at all. Indeed, both Lamarck and Darwin thought that hereditary traits were transferred through the blood. Due to this primitive level of science at the time, the imaginary scenarios of the theory of evolution were not looked upon as odd at all. Darwin's theses had a great impact on the scientific circles of his day. However, Darwin was still distressed. In the chapter, Difficulties on Theory, he wrote, If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. Darwin's fears proved to be true soon after his death. The laws of inheritance discovered by an Austrian botanist, Gregor Mendel, caused Lamarck's and Darwin's assertions to collapse. The science of genetics that developed at the beginning of the 20th century proved that it was not acquired physical traits, but only genes that were transmitted to subsequent generations. This discovery made it clear that a scenario suggesting that acquired traits accumulated from generation to generation and generated different living species was implausible. In other words, there were no inheritable variations for Darwin's proposed mechanism of natural selection to choose from. Subsequently, the theory of evolution as advanced by Darwin has been collapsed early in the 20th century. All the other efforts by evolutionists in the 20th century could do nothing but only confirm that natural selection had no evolutionary power. A famous evolutionist, the English paleontologist Colin Patterson, admitted this when he said, no one has ever produced a species by mechanisms of natural selection. No one has ever got near it. And most of the current argument in neo-Darwinism is about this question.
20th century science has also demonstrated that there are systems and organs with extremely complicated and intricate mechanisms at work in living beings. These systems and organs will not function even if a single component of them is lacking. This characteristic, called the irreducible complexity of life, is evidence that these structures must have emerged at once and fully formed. This fact definitely demolishes the evolutionist claim that living beings evolved gradually by natural selection through minor changes over time. When it was clear that the mechanism of natural selection proposed by Darwin had no evolutionary power, evolutionists had to make a fundamental change in the theory. In addition to the concept of natural selection, they added a second mechanism called mutation. Mutations are alterations or distortions that take place in the DNA of living beings, mostly as a result of external effects such as radiation or chemical action. The theory of evolution now holds that living things are differentiated from one another and develop as a result of mutations. This cannot be true, for mutations only damage the information in the DNA and give only harm to a living being. No beneficial mutation has yet been observed either in nature or in laboratories. Since mutations do not add new genetic information, it is impossible for living beings to acquire new organs through mutations. No reptile could ever acquire wings, nor could an eyeless creature develop eyes by mutations. For decades, Evolutionists subjected different living beings to the effects of radiation and chemicals in an attempt to obtain favorable mutations. What they always ended up with were disabled, deficient, or barren creatures. Countless experiments carried out on fruit flies have shown that the effects of mutations are not beneficial, but rather destructive or fatal. Mutations disrupt the perfect DNA code of a living thing and turn it into a freak of nature. This is why Professor Richard Dawkins one of the most renowned advocates of the theory of evolution of our day, hesitates when he is asked to give a single example that increases the genetic information. Professor Dawkins, can you give an example of a genetic mutation or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information in the genome? truth is very evident. Life has such a complex design that can never come about by chance. A mechanical watch cannot be formed as a result of the coincidental assembling of cogs, and it proves that there is an intelligent watchmaker. Likewise, life embodies a superior design that proves the existence of a creator who has created it from nothing. The whole universe is the outcome of a flawless creation. The exalted wisdom, power, and knowledge of the creator shows itself in everything he has created. Even the creation of man himself is a miracle. 